Production funding for Another View comes from the Hampton Citizens Unity Commission, using the time, talents, and skills of a broad base of citizen volunteers to help break down racial and cultural barriers. Working to achieve the City of Hampton's community plan for a healthy, diverse community. And from the African American Programming Advisory Group, community visionaries assisting WHRO to engage, enlighten, educate, and entertain all communities in Hampton Roads. And now, another view. Hello everyone, I'm Barbara Ham Lee and welcome to Another View. Do you know that the two leading causes of kidney disease in African Americans are high blood pressure and diabetes? Are you aware that African Americans are four times more likely than whites to develop kidney failure and will need dialysis or a transplant? Or how about this? African Americans make up 12% of the population, yet account for 32% of kidney failure. Those are some scary statistics, but there are lifestyle changes you can make to prevent this disease. And if you develop kidney disease, it is not a death sentence, as you will hear from our guests this evening. Please welcome Pam Ransom, a kidney donor, Carlton Ray Ransom, a kidney recipient, Eleanor Myers, Vice President of Client Programs with the National Kidney Foundation, Virginia, and Paula Baysmore, Eastern Virginia Regional Director with the National Kidney Foundation, Virginia. Welcome everybody to Another View. Thanks so much Thank for you. joining us. Thank you. Eleanor, I want to start with you. Kidney disease, what, how do we know if we have it? There are several signs um, if you have kidney disease. First of all, uh, knowing that you have high blood pressure can be one of, uh, one of the signs. If you don't know that you actually have high blood pressure, you'll find that uh, the swelling of the, uh, of the, usually the extremity of your, your feet, mm -hmm. uh, your hands, uh, urination, um, constant urination, particularly at night. Uh, sometimes dry mouth, your mouth starts feeling like uh, it, there's acid or iron in your mouth. Mm. And uh, tiredness, feeling uh, very, very fatigued. And um, of course, once you go to the um, the doctor, the doctor can really uh, diagnose those uh, uh, those symptoms. And uh, two, two out of three times, you do have some form of chronic kidney disease developing. Now, explain to our audience, for those who may not know, what exactly does the kidney do? The kidneys filter the toxins from your body, all the waste uh, that um, that's built up in your body, and it filters those to keep the blood flowing normally uh, and to keep the body functioning properly. Mm -hmm. And Paula, it seems like that every time we do a show about a disease lately with an, another view that African Americans are disproportionately affected. Right. The same thing with kidney disease. Right. Is it because we don't go to the doctor enough or what are the reasons? That has a lot to do with it. Also, um, I think our, our diet and uh, sometimes just the fear of the unknown, not knowing, not going to find out are also contributors. Uh, sometimes we don't pay attention to our own family history. We don't know our family history because the generation ahead of us has not gone to have themselves checked out and we don't know about our medical history. So we need to go to the doctor is really what it comes down to. Now, Ray, you are a kidney recipient. Correct. You had to have a kidney transplant. Yes, ma'am. Um, tell me a little bit about what was happening with you when you found out that you had kidney disease. Well, actually, I can actually remember back in junior high school uh, some of the symptoms that they were talking about, especially the swelling of the uh, lower, uh, lower leg. Um, mm -hmm. I just remember that and I always had high blood pressure. One of the major indicators was um, I had uh, knee surgeries, I had two knee surgeries, and I remember my doctor always talking about my creatinine level is high. You may want to begin to take a, a look at, um, you know, your kidneys, your kidney function, and um, once again, it, it played over and over and over again. So, mm -hmm. um, honestly, I, I really ignored the symptoms, and years passed by, and uh, the fatigue set in, and um, probably uh, one of the worst times of my life. But the fatigue just constantly set in, and with the fatigue setting in. Um, uh, I finally went to uh, my uh, nephrologist, uh, Dr. Dada, and um, he diagnosed me with kidney disease. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that really caught me by surprise because, you know, the, uh, the unknown is always uh, scary. So. so even though you knew the symptoms and so forth, you just didn't believe that it could happen to you? Well, to be honest, I, I, I didn't know the symptoms, you know. Oh, um, okay. uh, at a young age, you, you know, kids, you're, you're invincible. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you grow up, uh, young men, you know, we have a tendency of, you know, we're invincible, so I'll just kind of be passive. But as time progressed and as I got older, um, 
I, I started paying a little bit more attention to the uh, symptoms. And so your disease became to a point, could you have gone on dialysis or did you just decide to do the transplant? How did that work? Well, actually, um, <laughs> believe it or not, I, I went to, uh, I had a chance to visit Dr. Dodd at one, uh, one uh, it was an evening, uh, afternoon in March, and I remember the, the month, and it was raining that particular day, and he, mm. You know, he kept telling me along the way that, hey, you may want to begin to take a look at these symptoms. You may want to start changing your habits, your eating habits. And um, I went to his office, and he was like, hey, you, you know, you're you're at the far end here. You you need a transplant. Oh. And I remember leaving the office that day just teary-eyed. You know, as a matter of fact, I had called my wife and was like, I have to have a transplant. And it was like, I had no idea what that meant. And um, for about six months, I was just, you know, unaware until one day I was like, okay. Let me grab a hold of myself. Let me let me do a little more research, and like they say, knowledge is power. And once I started getting that knowledge of exactly what it was, and it wasn't a, a death sentence, mm -hmm. you know, I, I I took the bull by the horns and just you know started going. Camera, as his wife, what was that like for you? It must have been scary for you uh -huh. to find out all of a sudden he needs a kidney, and you know how are we going to get one, and how are we going to get one? What are we going to do? Um, it was it was scary. It was. Um, frustrating. It was um, Ray basically shut down. Mm -hmm. um, it was, I'm not going to work. I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to sit here. And he, and he said six months. It took me, um, I called his friends. I, you know, I, I took his phone, called his friends, said, hey, we got we to gotta get together. We got to, yes, we got to do something because He's not going to make it if not. Um, literally, put him in the shower. You're going to work. Mm -hmm. You're not. This is not going to be a death sentence for you. This is not. We're we're, we're going to make this work. So and now, did you get on a list? Did you ask family to uh, you know get tested? What happened? How did you find your kidney? Um, we, we 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 clearly did. since you're here. Yeah, exactly. you found the kidney. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I I was not on the list. Uh, my wife and I had you know, discuss that, uh, that, that decision. And, um, you know, one of the things that uh, really upset me, and I, I can say this, upset me was I, I really, I felt like I didn't have my family support. You know, when it, once again, knowledge is power, and no one really understood and knew the, uh, the, the uh, precedence of what I was going through. So um, uh, my wife stepped up, and, you know, luckily that day I was batting a 1,000. She got tested, and, uh, you know, the rest is history. So you gave your kidney to him. Now, first of all, how long have you had your new kidney? What, two years? Two years, two years now. Yeah. Okay, so you're doing fine. I'm doing great. When you found out you were a match, what went through your head? I know you love your husband, but you're giving <laughs> up your kidney. <laughs> and that, and well, I, I'm being a little flip, but, but one of the things that people I think are concerned about is because they, they feel like if they give up this body part that it's going to do something to them. Is correct. that correct? Um, I don't think that I had that concern that something was going to happen to me. My concern was that he's not going to be here to help me raise these kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that was the first concern. And um, my other concern was that we have two kidneys um, and we can live with one because people are born with one. Um, and I can live with one, so why not give him one? Um, and we did, we found out in 03 that we were a match. Hmm. Actually, a little, the day of my oldest daughter's graduation, we found wow. out that we were a match. Um, you had all kinds and, of blessings going yes. on. Yes. <laughs> and three years later, um, I just think that um, God knew we were okay. But three years, he waited three years later to make us, to let us know that this is going to work out. It's okay. Um, and three years later, we, we went on in. We had our Thanksgiving dinner in the hospital. Wow. <laughs> so. Oh, my goodness. I could go through this, this whole story. <laughs> but, uh, Eleanor, let me ask you, do most people go the transplant route? Most people, I believe, though, have to go through dialysis, don't they? Most people do uh, go through dialysis, primarily because um, getting a kidney, first of all, a, a, a kidney that's compatible, uh, it's 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 rather hard. It's a long process for some. Mm -hmm. And um, if you <clears throat> go into kidney failure, you don't have, you're not as fortunate to have someone to donate a, a, a kidney. 
uh, and right away, then yes, many people have been on dialysis uh, over 20 years, uh, as and a matter of fact. And that's what keeps them alive. And that's what keeps it's, them alive. It's like an dialysis. artificial kidney. Yeah. Yes, it does. And Lisa Godley spent some time with a dialysis patient, and she's going to show us what that is like. For the last five years, Carrie Tucker Tillman has planned her life around her dialysis treatments. But her trouble with her kidneys started decades earlier when she lost one of them to kidney stone damage back in the early 70s. I have one kidney, and my kidney had been out for 33 years, and I started having problems with my blood pressure going up. And then I went and I had a kidney biopsy, and when I had the biopsy, it showed that I had focal sclerosis, the kidney disease. What did the doctor say to you at that point? He said that it's hard enough keeping one person off of dialysis with two kidneys, and it was going to be harder. But by me just having one kidney, it would be harder. But he would do the best he could to keep me off dialysis as long as he could. And how long was that? 18 months. About that same time, Carrie met the love of her life, Herman. And it wasn't long after they'd married that her one remaining kidney began to give out. Carrie thought she had the flu. He had tried to get me to go to the doctor all week, but I just kept telling him that I thought I had this virus. And so um, that Saturday morning, he got me ready and he took me to the emergency room. And they said that if I had waited two hours later, I would have died because everything was shutting down. While Carrie knew about her condition 18 months in advance, Research indicates that 43% of African Americans on dialysis didn't even realize they were in kidney failure until a week before their treatment started. While the amount of time a patient spends on the dialysis machine varies, Carrie is on three hours and 15 minutes three times a week. We asked one of the nurses to explain what the machine does. What we're doing is because her kidneys don't work, this right here is her kidney. So out of the red line, the arterial, we're taking out all the dirty blood that's not being cleaned by her kidneys. We're taking it out, we're running it through the machine, basically washing her blood. It's going through this, her artificial kidney, and we're sending it back through the venous line into her body, clean, or as clean as it can be without having an actual kidney. For patients undergoing treatment, the support of family and friends is critical, and Herman knows that. Well, my role is, I considered to be a um, caretaker and that is I believe 90 percent of the support that is needed for um, patients not only on dialysis if they have the right support that's a healing process Carrie is very very willing to live she have been a real inspiration to people both myself and those who are not on dialysis like thousands of dialysis patients, Carrie is on a waiting list for a new kidney, but she doesn't dwell on that and continues to make the most of her life, including traveling. I let my social work, my dialysis social worker know the address that I will be staying when I reach my destination, and she does the rest. She set up my time, she get a place as close to where I'm staying, and all I have to do is show up. A lot of people feel like dialysis is just going on a machine, staying on a machine three or four hours. But it's so much more to it than that. You have to change your diet. You have to watch your intake of fluid. And it just changes your whole life. Your activities are not the same anymore. It really changes your lifestyle totally. For Another View, I'm Lisa Godley. And there are so many people currently living on dialysis. Ray, I noticed you nodding as she was talking about symptoms and, and the things that she was going through. Talk to me about what was going through your mind. Yeah, well, uh, first and foremost, my, my, my theory was uh, well, I'm never going on dialysis. Uh, once I, I got that call, uh, as a matter of fact, I went to Dr. Dada one day and he was like, hey, um, you're going to make a phone call and you're going to be on dialysis. So I was actually on dialysis for about six months uh, prior to my uh, transplant. Okay, so you did go on dialysis. Exactly, yes ma'am. Yes, ma mm -hmm. Fortunately enough, um, I, I did it at home, so it really didn't change my quality of life. So I was able to go to work and, you know, come home and live a as normal of a life as I could. So, um, but yeah, just listening to to other programs, listening to people talk, you can really relate to how they feel and you know some of the things that they were going through. So when she was talking, I was like, okay, yeah, you know, I, I feel exactly how you feel. Has this experience, and and I want to talk a little bit more about transplants in just a minute, but overall, has this experience made you more 
conscious of going to the doctor when you get some kind of symptom that doesn't seem like it's right. It does. It <laughs> does. I mean, really, it, I mean, it gives you a, from everything that I've gone through, I mean, it gives you a totally different perspective on life. And, mm -hmm. you know, my, my motto now is, you know, don't sweat the small stuff, you know. So, I mean, what appears to be a, 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 a big issue most of the time, that to me is just really not a big issue. Pamela, what did you have to go through in terms of, of um, the transplant? I mean, I know you were tested, but and was there tested, education? And tested, uh -huh, and okay. tested, and tested, and tested, and <laughs> tested. <laughs> what exactly do they do? Just give us a sense of, um, kind of what you went through. You, everything you can imagine. Um, I had mammograms. I had um, MRIs. I had everything. I mean, they did everything. They went from the bottom to the top. They want to make sure that everything was okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that probably went on maybe three, four months. I mean, it, three, four months. yeah. Um, the closer that it it got to the, the transplant time, we had to come back over, do blood work, and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but, How long was your recovery period? Um, mine was a little bit extended. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't think my body. They said four to four to three to four weeks. I could go back to work and I was thinking that before Christmas I would be back at work um, my body did not like that I oh, did not wow. have um, so it took you a little bit longer yeah I, I went back into the hospital um, oh, that okay. that time um, but let me just say that's that's just me <laughs> you know everybody you know other people that I have have ran into they they're fine you know after a couple of weeks um, I guess just my body was like, oh no, something, something's mm -hmm. missing. It's, it's not there. And do you have to take medication to keep from rejecting yes, rejection? Exactly, so exactly. you take that all the time. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Paula, how many people are on the transplant list, and what is it about transplants and the African American community in particular? Do we tend to uh, donate our organs? No, is African Americans tend not to donate their organs. Um, thankfully. Um, a transplanted organ doesn't see color, so it really doesn't make any difference. Uh, but that is one thing that we are really trying to bring awareness to, the need for organs that need to be donated. And we're going to be having an event later on this month that um, it is a fundraiser, but it's also an education piece to help us bring awareness to the need for organs that need to be donated. Mm -hmm. And it's not just kidneys. I mean, there are many other organs that um, we have a shortage of and, and, and need to be to be donated. Now, you also, the Kidney Foundation, I can ask this of either one of you ladies, um, does uh, screenings. I think you call it KEEP. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Tell yes. us a little bit about that, Eleanor. Well, KEEP uh, actually stands for Kidney Early Evaluation Program. and. What we do there is to go out into the communities throughout our service areas and we offer a free and complete health kidney health screening. We go the gamut. We uh, actually uh, uh, take uh, the blood pressure, height, weight measurement, uh, waist measurement. We do glucose testing, uh, creatinine. We test for uh, kidney function, how well the kidneys are functioning. We call that. GFR, a glomerular filtration rate for those, and you probably are familiar with that term too, and we and, and cholesterol testing, and we do it with a uh, a cadre of, of medical people. We have uh, phlebotomists on site, uh, nurses, and physicians. Mm -hmm. Once the person goes through the screening process, uh, the on site consultants will actually sit down and talk with the the individuals about the test results they can receive that day. So you get it right then and there? Well, we get that, but the blood sample, the blood collection, we have to send away to a lab. Mm -hmm. And all of the test results will be gotten back and uh, we will be sent to the individual in about three to four weeks. And we have one that's coming up um, May the 16th, correct? Um, keep um, at the Grafton Baptist Church in Grafton, mm -hmm. and it's free? Open to the yes. public, correct? Um, and if you want more information, you can go to Eleanor, E L E A N O R M, at kidneyva.org for registration and information. So you really should try to register. Yes. Ahead of yes. Time, if yes. You did. If you could talk to anyone right now in, in terms of uh, being a transplant donor, what would you tell them? Um, to go out, sign up to be an do organ donor. Um, it helps. I mean, it, it really helps to to help. My thing is, I loved him enough to to basically. I wanted to see him here. I'm mm -hmm. not, and really, I'm saying for not for the kids, but I wanted him to be here with me. Mm -hmm. And if it's something that I could give to him, 
for him to be here, that was my thing, for him to, to be here and to give an organ for someone else to continue life. That's I would just do it. Mm -hmm. And as the recipient, what would you tell people? Um, it's, it's as simple as going to DMV and checking the little organ donor box on your um, license. That, that's a start. You know, and um, not only that, educate yourself, you know, because um, the, the process is, is not as, as bad as, as you think. Okay. We got about 30 seconds left. Give us those symptoms one more time so that people can pay attention. Mm -hmm. uh, tiredness, uh, swelling of the limbs, uh, frequent urination. Uh, if, and, if, of course, with high blood pressure, you, you know that very well. You definitely need to, to check that out, too. Okay. And Paula, tell us about the fashion show very quickly. Fashion I'm the show MC. Style for Life. <laughs> Barbara Hamley is the MC. And uh, it'll be an opportunity for people to see models who are either organ donors or recipients to see that, you know, they are leading fulfilling and, and uh, very healthful lives. And it'll also be an opportunity for people to talk to people that have been donors and recipients. Fantastic. Thank you all so much for joining me today and, and talking about this is a critical uh, disease, but it can be lived with and people just need to really pay attention. Thanks so much to Pamela and Ray Ransom, Eleanor Myers, and Paula Baysmore. And we come, when we come back, a lesson in diversity. But first, here's what's going on in Hampton Roads. Welcome back, everybody. Rodney King uttered the words, can't we all just get along? But the city of Hampton is doing something to make those words a reality. They are teaching residents of all races to get along, as Lisa Godley shows us when she visited Hampton's Diversity College. This group is tackling some tough issues, and they aren't discussing health care, homeland security, or the economy. They're talking about topics that many of us would consider taboo outside of our inner circle. Topics like race, religion, and discrimination. Go to the center and spread yourself out based on your level of comfort on first day new church. This is the Hampton Diversity College. Here, people from all races and all walks of life speak candidly and listen attentively while they learn more about themselves and others. Remember the scene in Spike Lee's school days when the students separated themselves by the color of their skin? Try being in a room when they ask you to line up according to color, lightest to darkest. The dark skin complexion on that end, the light skin complexion on that end, and 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago, when I first started doing some diversity work, I had no idea. Not that there was a difference between that end of the line and that one, but between this end of the line and that one. When things get a little heated or something just doesn't sit right, you can always say, ouch. I'm just dis so disappointed that still that color matters as much as it does. And so I wouldn't, I didn't, I ouch because I wasn't gonna participate. I ouch because within the African American community, there is still a tendency and a bias. I know people who would prefer to click and be around people who are light skinned, or your hair got to be a certain way, or your eye color has to be a certain way. So, for as an African American, that dredges up a lot of painful you know, feelings. The Citizens Unity Commission started the Hampton Diversity College in February of 2004. Close to 80 people will graduate from five different classes on June 25th of this year. The classes are held once a week for eight consecutive weeks. They use exercises and dialogue to explore their similarities and differences in hopes of creating a better understanding and respect for someone who's not like them. Because if you can't bring people in, treat them as though they have a significant contribution to make and respect that, and never ever ignore them, find out where their, where their talents lie and engage those talents, 
then you're going to lose them. For another view, I'm Lisa Godley. The Hampton Unity Commission, which sponsors Another View, is in charge of the Diversity College, so visit our website for more information. Oh, and one other thing about kidney disease, be sure to ask your doctor to check for three things, your blood pressure, test for diabetes, and check your urine protein levels. Early detection is so important. Thank you so much for joining us for Another View. Please visit our website, www.anotherview.tv, and let us know how we're doing. Or you can always write us at 5200 Hampton Boulevard, Norfolk. And we'll see you next week for another edition of Another View. Production funding for Another View comes from Hampton's 400th Anniversary Committee and the Hampton Neighborhood Commission. Partnering with neighborhoods throughout the city, working hand in hand to create vibrant places we are proud to call home and celebrate. And from the African American Programming Advisory Group, community visionaries assisting WHRO to engage, enlighten, educate, and entertain all communities in Hampton Roads.